Time's up. Time to get started. Uh, let me figure out where I'm actually. Posture, yeah, that's important. Maybe, all right. There we go. Another Sunday, another coding stream. Let's see. Yeah, I think everything is looking good. Looking good. All right. So today, getting back into uh, glowing telegram. So last time around, um, I don't know that I've actually shown the the project planning thing for this this project, <laughs> um, but I have one and I should probably start using it more. This is what I was doing for uh, for uh, Daily Jewel, the calorie counting app that we were working on last year. Hmm. Right, so anyway, so yeah, last time we were working on, we had gotten the uh, the information about silences, what I'm calling pauses here. Uh, elsewhere, we're calling them silences. We're detecting silences. And we were working on some UI stuff last time around to be able to visualize them and to select them. And I kind of went on a bit of a, um, into a bit of a rabbit hole. I was thinking that uh, like the drag and drop functionality, like th the, kind of the DOM APIs there were the way to go. And then I realized after the stream that that was kind of unnecessary. So I ended up, um, let's see, what's the easiest way to get back to the project? Let me just go back to my profile. There we go, glowing telegram. Uh, and so I, I pushed up several commits. So here we go, add pan and zoom functionality. The timeline component is the the commit in question where I ended up merging up, uh, like ended up uh, making something that somewhat works. So we still have like the, the wheel to like zoom in and out. Um, but instead of like the drag and drop events, what did we end up doing? We're hooking up to uh, pointer down, up and move and leave instead to do that. So we just have some things here. Um, this is not good. <laughs> it's okay, but like if I if I show you the behavior here, like if you would expect if you like zoom in and the mouse is like over here, let's let's say over here, that you zoom in towards that point, but that's not the behavior uh, at all. Uh, and the zoom out doesn't keep you centered on kind of where you're centered right now, those kind of behaviors that you kind of, if they're not present, it makes the, the interaction feel very weird and uh, like not controlled, but it works. And, you know, realistically, like at some point in the future, if we do, let me take a step back. So the, the fact of the matter is, is I don't know, like, down the road, say I keep on working on this project and we, we do you know more and more and more stuff, we may get to a point down the road in which this UI makes no sense. We would want to do something completely different. So I'm not going to overinvest in building something very fancy um, right now. One of the things I did consider in the intervening week is one of the, the goals for this glowing telegram project is to be able to slice up the stream, uh, which it is already sliced up. So the local recording of each of my streams is, is recorded in 20 minute segments, but I don't want to just take um, 20 minutes where, you know, the first 20 minutes is actually like five to 10 minutes of like stream startup and introduction and stuff that I might want to trim out. 
and then the next, you know, then, you know, there are, there's different qualities to each of those 20 minute segments and they kind of start and stop randomly. Whereas when I'm doing the stream, I take a break every hour. And so that's kind of what these, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to detect when those breaks happen without me having to manually annotate it. Um, ultimately, the goal that I set out um, for this project, the main thing, the main inspiration for this project was the ability to take all of those 20 minute segments that are recorded by OBS, drop them into DaVinci Resolve with them auto annotated or broken up into um, episodes already so that I can fine tune them. Ideally with like annotations, um, things about what happened in chat um, and any effects that I might want to put onto every episode. Like I do a thing where it like overlays and it says, hey, if you like the video, like and subscribe. Uh, this was originally streamed on Twitch, the, those sorts of things that I put on my YouTube videos. And I may do more stuff in the future once that becomes less tedious to do to add to every single video. Um, not to mention later down the road, uh, there's a lot of things I want to do. Actually, another driver for Globing Te Telegram as a tool is besides just getting the, the videos into DaVinci Resolve already kind of pre-prepped, also getting um, speech to text, like transcribing the video and then doing auto summarization and handling, taking the result from DaVinci Resolve, which it can auto upload to YouTube, but it's, I would rather do that myself. Something I have not figured out yet is how it's gonna work where, so here's what I, here's what I wanna do the stream, right? Here's what I want to do this stream. I want to add a button to uh, that I can click that will use the selected breaking points to create an episode record for each intervening period. And then um, I need the ability to select one or more episodes and export them and export a OTIO. Uh, I think that's like an open timeline is what that stands for, OTIO format. Yeah, open timeline. I've Googled that before, I think. Open timeline IO. Um, it's an interchange format. It's it's based on JSON. It says it's a modern EDL list. Um, but what's cool about this is that of the different formats that DaVinci Resolve supports, um, specifically with the videos that I'm saving out from the stream, there's multiple audio tracks. And the other formats that I've tried um, I mentioned this in, a, in an update in the in the community discord, but basically other formats weren't working. Hey, Brainless, good morning. How is your uh, Sunday going? So anyway, so I, I um, right. So where I was going with this thought is that we can get the, we can select the, the episodes that are generated, essentially the metadata, uh, records of metadata. We select one or more of them, we export them into OTIO, import those into Vin DaVinci Resolve, render out videos, and then I need to figure out how to get the videos back in, like go back into the episode records and have it uh, link somehow to those those videos. Uh, right now everything is on local disk anyway, so it's it's not as bad as it would be if this was like a remote service where I'm like, oh, I have to upload files and things, which would be annoying. Uh, Brainless says, apologies, I completely fell asleep on Friday. I woke up in the morning with my headset on. <laughs> wow, you did you did fall asleep. Um, well, yeah, I think the end of the like after, after the last crash, um, the AI, my my AI overlord, <laughs> really uh, uh, was not helpful. And uh, well, you saw part of that where it like gave away land and stuff, but then it demanded that I 
uh, change faiths and other stuff. And uh, Foxy also had a bad time. Uh, I think she just lost one county, but she 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 kind of treated that as a defeat. Yeah, that's fine. We'll uh, we'll have to look th think about uh, doing s some other an a different start. Maybe uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe the the multiplayer issues will be fixed. Whatever's causing the crash, maybe uh, maybe, maybe there'll be uh, some patches. But uh, we were talking at the end about maybe doing more. So we'll see if that happens. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she seemed um, receptive to the idea of playing more. So we'll see. Uh, anyway. I was wondering why you didn't say anything back. <laughs> After the end of the stream, you were still on voice, and I said, uh, thanks for uh, coming and being part of things. But yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was going to be kind of a slow thing anyway. I think it makes sense uh, for a multiplayer situation just to not pause a lot, but to play really slow and take it easy. But there were a lot of pauses anyway for you know figuring things out. And I, I don't think it was a bad thing. Um, but yeah. Okay. So I think, um, what do I think? I think that, um, okay. That, that was the workflow. The, the piece that I'm not sure about is once we generate the files, in the video editor, how to get them back. Um, probably, I don't know. Maybe we can have some kind of convention where the file goes in the render and it just like looks for it there or assumes it's there. Why that's relevant is because the, the next step in that workflow is like we go in and we can select multiple episodes and say, okay, now upload those to YouTube or generate summaries, you know, do those things. Brainless says, I am so excited. I figured out the details to port my change history module from Ruby into Elixir. That's nice. This was the thing that you were saying that the, uh, the Ruby code had a lot of like metaprogramming in it. I think that was the one you were talking about before. It is cold here in my uh, my home office today because, uh, and I don't have the camera on so you can't see, but I am I am covered in blankets because it is, is so cold. I mean, it's, about as cold as it out is outside, which is like, what, 40 something F? I don't know. Um, but the, our furnace is out and will not be, uh, we're, we're getting a new one because it cannot be repaired. So be uh, without heat for a couple of days. Uh, yeah, I figured out how to do most of those things with macros. So there are macros in Elixir is what you're saying. <laughs> I wouldn't know. Okay, so uh, I think that that's most of the, the like the impending workflow that we need to implement. And even though, uh, even though something of optimization, once the record is saved, I will spawn a process to save the the change in the database and the back without waiting to send the response. Uh huh. Okay. What happens if that process fails? Okay, so what we need to do is a few things. And I made a list actually. Um, that's why I kind of, I went back into using the, the project. What was this tab? Oh, right, so we were looking at this. We don't need to look at this anymore. This is the, uh, the final version of the changes from the last stream where I ended up using the pointer events instead of 
um, uh, drag and drop, which is what I tried. We have a database problem, most likely just logging and moving on. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Well, if that's if that's accept acceptable for your use case, then there you go. All right, so like I said, I, I prepped a bit of an agenda for this next step in the, the thing that I just laid out that I wanted to do today. So we'll see how, how this goes. One thing that I thought would be good to do, and this is kind of a side thing, but um, will make me feel much better about the situation, is in a bunch of different places, right? We're just showing this ISO 8601 duration format. And it would be nice. It's better to fail silently as you don't want the fit to fail the operation just because it's, this internal thing failed. Okay. Um, okay. I guess it must not be Uh, it sounds like a thing that's not critical if it fails then. Aha, this, this is for us to have an audit trail of changes to a record. So I've worked on a lot of things that have audit trails, but the audit trails are not quote unquote, just for us. They are like regulatory audit trails. So my habit, the thing that I uh, would say in requirements for the things that I work on, but I'm not streaming it is if we cannot audit the change, the change cannot happen, right? You have to just roll it back. It's a, it's a, a critical requirement that the change be audited, but that does not sound like the situation that you are in. Not the case for us. Not have external requirement for it. Yeah. So it's more of a uh, a helpful thing. Yes. Uh, so anyway, so yeah, I want to create a, a custom input. I'm going to call it duration input. Uh, and when I say input, I mean in the context of Re React Admin, um, something that I can use that I can uh, have instead of just a text field. Um, I don't know. I mean, the, the precision of this value is kind of silly. I don't know if I need this much precision, so we'll see. What I had noted here was just that we were gonna have periods of hours, minutes, and seconds. So I don't know, the, I might do like a 10th of a second precision. It's not very well. <laughs> you ended up using ChatGPT. Uh, I mean, if it gives you a hint, why not? You still have to like double check that it works and it's not doing something crazy. But um, so what I'm thinking about right now, though, is that again these these quote unquote durations are really offsets in a video file uh, where it's like 60 frame per second video. Uh, so the real resolution is a 60th of a second. So if we have a hundredth of a second resolution, that's more resolution than there is in the video file. So maybe down to a hundredth of a second, or maybe we can have a separate field so what I want to do is I want to have like numeric, uh, like number inputs for hour, minute, second. We could have four inputs, whatever. Let's uh, let's just do some code. Um, and for now, again, as we start adding more components, we'll have to think about like organizing uh, file structure. And there's lots of uh, good ideas out there for doing that. But for right now, I'm just going to dump it all into the SOC folder. So we're going to create a duration input. PSX. 
Uh, okay. And handily, I've written this text here. Maybe I can just have Copilot write it for me. Uh, specify it's for React Admin. It's probably helpful. that uh, yeah I imported my functions that I've already written it's using the use input hook it's doing the parse it's doing text fields as helper text and um, I mean maybe those aren't I show the name of my functions but I have something similar so what if we just insert that Let's, let's go full screen here. So, uh, what's it unhappy about? Is this not the right import? Do I have somewhere where I'm already importing from material UI? That is a question. BRB? All right. I will be here. Uh, Mui material. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is an old style import. This is how it used to be. Um, and then, what does ISO duration do again? We have a function to parse, uh, but not a function. All oh, right, so we we return a number of seconds. Uh, we probably want to just make uh, these two functions. Uh, let's see. I think I want to refactor this. I'm going to rename this function to like parse in two seconds or something. And we're going to do something uh, different. Uh, rename symbol. So parse into seconds. Now, good, that updated the test and that updated these files as well. So that, that looks like it did the right thing. Okay, and so we're gonna create two new functions, just like parse and format. Uh, the reason for doing it like that, do I wanna do it like that? Press minute seconds. Hmm, how do I wanna do this? And now we're going the opposite direction. Yeah, we're doing two ISO 8601 duration. So this is gonna generate uh, ISO 8601 duration from new value, which has, I don't know why there's, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Oh, I see. All right, all right, okay. okay so we're, we're making a function here to handle hours. That is, that is an interesting choice. Well, not a choice, a thing that was generated. Essentially, this is um, saying that this function will take an object and embed it in the object will be some uh, field, hours, minutes, or seconds. Oh wait, it's, so it's overriding? Uh, I mean, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. All right, so this is just overriding 
uh, either hours, minutes, or seconds with whatever this value is. Um, an issue is that this is going to be a string, and these are probably going to be numbers. We'll uh, we'll narrow that down once we actually implement these functions. I, I guess I will just implement these functions as is. Um, let's fix that file. Hey, uh, Nate. Good morning. How's it going? All right. So I guess I'll make these two functions here, and we'll actually like properly define uh, their types function. Just dying on uh, Rogue Company. What is Rogue Company? Uh, a game, I assume. Ah. Uh -huh. Free to play multiplayer tactical third person hero shooter video game. I see. Interesting. Not exactly the game I the kind of game that I would normally play, but um Hope you're having fun. Dying. Um okay, so this takes a duration string and takes hours, minutes, and seconds. If I do it this way, I think I, I I probably need to decide if I want to have a separate field for milliseconds. That's going to be a lot nicer than having decimals in the second field. Um, and I probably want to do milliseconds because... Um, what is, what is the name for one hundredth of a second? I mean, alternatively, I could just like, I could say the the final field is frames. Hey, Kitsune Sloth 18, welcome in. You've been following for two months and 14 days, wow. How's it going? So yeah, I think if I did frames, then the fourth value would be, you know, I probably will bake in an assumption. And Brainless has been following for seven months. Yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, there's there's microseconds if I wanted to go the opposite direction. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I haven't heard someone refer to a Twitch baby in a while. Uh, as a thing, but yeah, the nine month anniversary. If I wanted to just assume that I'm always doing 60 frames per second, or I wanted to just use that as a convention, then I could do hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. <sighs> How do I feel about that? Um up to the table. Of course, the, the underlying representation of the string is not in frames. I think for now, I'll just do milliseconds and maybe I'll regret that later. And then we can, we can cross that bridge when I come to it. Uh, so we're gonna do milliseconds. Hi, <laughs> milliseconds. And these will be number, and duration is a string. Um, and I already know, I feel like, because the, the other function is also going to need this type. Let's just extract that into a type now, or an interface. Yeah, something like that, but with milliseconds. And so then this function returns a duration. Duration, there you go. Okay. And then the current implementation 
uh, extract seconds and then drives hours and then minutes. Yeah, so this sort of works. I think. What does this function do again? So basically we rely on this function to get us the total value by parsing out years, months, days, hours, minutes, and seconds. So I think we want to do that. Um, let's, let's take out the implementation again now that we've changed the signature of the function. Let's see what it does. So this one um, is wrong, right? Because what this is gonna do is it's just gonna dis discard years and months and days. And we don't wanna do that. We want to translate whatever the value is, the total duration, and we just wanna translate that into uh, hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. So really what we wanna do is we wanna say like const total seconds is that. Now we could, so then we can extract how many hours goes into total seconds and express that as an integer value by doing math.floor. Although we don't want to do if, if we're gonna if we're gonna express a value here, we don't want to say 3600. So it's it's 60 seconds times uh, 60. We can we can do a thing that I've often seen people do and in other languages, you might have a ability to like have syntax for dimensionality here, um, but we can do 60 seconds per minute. Minutes per hour. Uh, yeah, and then we do the same thing. The thing I really like, I really enjoy about using Copilot is that it can it, it it can make a lot of nonsense, but it can do things like this for us. Um, now, is this what we want? So now we're gonna get minutes, seconds per minute, sixty um, minus hours times sixty. Do we want to do that like that? All right, we want to take out all that. We want to figure out how many hours divides evenly. And then this is a way. Another way would be to um, figure out the total number of seconds in hours. So like hours uh, times, okay, that's wrong, but we wanna say, we basically wanna do this math in the other way. What do we do up here? Oh yeah, see, again, magic values. Basically, I'm doing, I'm undoing part of this, but I want to do this in kind of a nice way. So, yeah, that's right. Minutes per hour times seconds per minute. Okay, so this value is the total number of seconds expressed in this hours value. And what we want to do is we want to take that and then we want to subtract, um, or rather we want to take total seconds minus this value. Okay. So this will be the, the remaining seconds once hours is taken out. 
and then we want to take that value and divide it um, because it's seconds, we want to then divide the whole thing to get minutes, seconds per minute. Almost three months, uh, Nate. All right, and then we want to do the same thing again. Um, it is then trying to give us like a desk, like a, a floating point value for seconds here because it's not doing math.floor. So really what we want to do is we want to do the same thing here, except we want to take, um, uh, this starts getting tedious. There is probably like an iterative approach that's going to do better. It's going to be nicer to do. So let's, um, let me think about that for a second. How do we do that? So if we think about what we're trying to get and express that as data, right? Express the, the idea of what we're trying to do as data, um, as like a list, and then we can iterate over that and that will give us the values to like do the division or multiplication from. That might be the thing to do, right? So then we'd say something like, um, const, uh, let's see, duration parts. Yeah, something like this, but we'll do something a little bit more complex where we want to actually have an object. Yeah, and, and something like that, but what we can do, we don't need a label, we just need a key of hours. And then what we need is, so to get hours, yeah, a factor, right? 60 times 60, 3,600 is the value, right? And if we're gonna do this, we might as well take advantage of what, what I've already written to have something here. And then um, Copilot should, there we go. Uh, yeah, and when we get to milliseconds, we'll have to see how that's gonna work. Let's, um, let's leave that off for now and we'll, we'll see what we can do here. So what we'll do is we'll say, let's say const uh, result. Yeah, we could do something like that. Um, the milliseconds is really easy because all we need to do is we need to have, um, we just need the decimal part of total seconds. Right? How do we do that? Well, that's just total seconds minus math.floor to total seconds. Like that. Right? So if this is like 2.3, the math.floor of 2.3 is 2. 2.3 minus 2 is 0.3. Um, of course, if we want milliseconds, then we need to multiply this whole thing by 1,000. And technically speaking, total seconds could have resolution higher than milliseconds. So let's make sure this is this is a um, not does it have a decimal by doing floor on the whole thing. One more set of parentheses there. Okay. So yeah, we can do that, but we're not. We're, let's let's return. Ooh, could we do a reduce on duration parts? So essentially, reduce would have us. Uh, we would ooh. That could be interesting. 
So we would evaluate each part. We have an accumulator, which is essentially what we're doing here. We have an accumulator. Uh, reduce makes sense, sort of. Hmm. I, my, my hesitance to do this is it, it kind of breaks how I would expect a reduce to work because it's kind of a, it's a functional programming concept. And so this function that we're going to pass into reduce is going to be, a, um, typically you would have a function that only works on the information passed into it. So it wouldn't refer to like global state or information, but in this case, we would probably do that. Um, unless the accumulator has mm, right, because we need, we need to have access to total seconds. So, I mean, we can do this and I don't know that there's a better way other than, you know, we can just do a for loop over duration parts. Uh, that, that's kind of the what we have going on anyway. Let's just do it that way. I think that is going to be fine. I dislike the idea of, of uh, using reduce in, in like that. There we go. So uh, we can grab the key and factor from duration parts from each of the, the objects in the array. And then what we're going to do is we're going to divide total seconds by the uh, factor. So when we're looking at the first entry, that'll be hours. So we divide uh, the total number of seconds by how many seconds are in an hour, 3,600. And then we put that into result sub key, right? So we put that into the, the hour slot that we've we defined on line 99 and then we m mutate, we change total seconds to subtract out the number of seconds in the number of hours that we've stored in the slot. I think this works. <laughs> it's interesting how the type works. Hey, Marxy. Trixie just subscribed for three months. <laughs> Thank you for the three month sub. How are you doing? All right, yeah, so the, the const here as const um, means that instead of this, like without this, the type of this array looks like this, where it's just like, okay, it's an array of objects and they have a key and a factor. Um, but so it, it's kind of looking at kind of the general type of all the objects. If you do as const, then the type that is created for you is okay this is an array that has these objects in it and the key will either be hours minutes or seconds which is nice because that means when we are iterating over duration parts then key is either hours or minutes or seconds which means we don't get an error here when we try to assign the value into result because result only has our minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. Now total seconds is constant and we're mutating it. So that's just because normally when I create a, a quote unquote variable uh, these days, I always start with a const. Uh, but in this case, we want to actually mutate this value. Um, 
Now what's interesting here is that this actually makes our milliseconds calculation simpler. Like this is now duplicate work because when we reach the end of this for loop, um, the value in total seconds will be total seconds minus math.floor total seconds. Um, effectively, like once we take out all the hours and minutes, so then we take out the seconds, or rather the floor of each of the dividing out the factors. So what we can do here is we can move this logic. What is it that, that round to? Returns a supplied numeric expression rounded to the nearest integer. So, so this this value will be like a fraction of a second. So, like if it, if the if the duration here was like, you know, some number of minutes and then 1.5 seconds, at the end of this, seconds would have one, and then milliseconds would be zero because yeah. So at the end of the loop, anyway, seconds would be one. Total seconds would be 0.5 and then we multiply this by a thousand to get a number of milliseconds and we would round which would get us the the nearest integer value and i think that's fine instead of flooring it we can just round it so i might round up or round down depending on if uh like if we had resolution finer than millisecond like we had microsecond or nanosecond you know we had a bunch of extra decimal points anyway in the string uh, and that gets us milliseconds. So that's this function, which we also need to export. And then we need to do the opposite. Um, we need to take this duration object and we need to turn it into a string. And we have a function. No, we don't have a function that does that. We have one that kind of makes a pretty format. Uh, well, a string, it makes a string. Maybe that's not so pretty, but it's what it is. Uh, so here, yeah, so now we'll take a duration and we'll turn it into a string. So one interesting thing is because we have defined these hours and minutes and seconds and milliseconds fields in the object, we don't have to make the ISO 8601 duration look exactly like the uh, original input. Uh, in fact, that would be challenging to do, right? So this function is lossy, right? So the, the string here might have um, like one year, seven days, uh, so on and so forth, right? And we are not retaining how the string is represented Right? We're just converting it all into seconds and then determining how many hours of seconds that is and then how many minutes are left after that and how many seconds and how many milliseconds that. So total add up to this value. Um, so going the opposite way, it's not really possible with only this duration object to generate the exact string that was originally input. So like if you called here, here's a uh, here's a property that, that doesn't hold here. In other words, so like if you parse some value x, and then you take that value, right, and you say now to convert that back into ISO 8601 string, this this is not true. This is true. Well, that's not necessarily true uh, either, but this is not true. It could be that uh, it could be true, depending on exactly the value of x, but it won't always be the case. Now, the other way around, if you were to generate an ISO 8601 duration from a duration object and then parse it, you should get back the same value. So, if we wanted to do some uh, some property based slash generative testing like this is not a property that we could guarantee with the way we've designed this so it wouldn't be a valid test but we could go the opposite way 
around and say, you know, this, this would be true for any, any valid value X that you could pass to, to ISO 8601 duration, right? Any number of hours and minutes and seconds and milliseconds, you should be able to convert it into a string and then call this function and you should get back the same um, values anyway in the object. Okay, so that's kind of a, not something I'm gonna bother doing right now, but that that is a thing that should be true. All right, so now we have our functions for our duration input, which is one layer back. Uh, So now we should see, okay, we don't know what value is here because we don't know what the type is of record because, so use input takes a value type, which is passed to input props. Value type is defaults to any, but is the value of, I think that's kind of the internal represent, um, the, the value, wait, how are we, record doesn't exist, and yeah, that's not a thing. We don't take record here. Um, here's a question, is there is there a good type that we can use here for duration input? Let's see, so we would need to look in RA UI material UI SRC field. So if we look at just like a, a text input or something. Oh yeah, not field input. Fields are not inputs. Fields are like a display thing in React Admin. Inputs are how, uh, what results in like a UI element that you can edit. All right, let's just look at date input. So what is the type here? We have a date input props. Where's that defined? Okay. So we have something like this. So let's let's uh, do some copy paste. Um, and so text field props, but omitting helper text and label. So I think. Yeah, we could start with that. I think we should be able to like import these things from React Admin. And then we can say date input, well, not date input, whoops. Uh, duration input props. Okay, that makes that happy. <laughs> uh, and then use input. So I think So uh, let's do that. So input here doesn't exist on use input value. Okay, so. Interesting. Um, oh yeah, so what use input returns is uh, this type, which has ID is required field form state field state. So I think this code is based on a, a prior version of React admin. So let's take a look. I have the docs here, among other things. Um, one of these tabs. Writing error on the input component. So we have some options. We can use use controller. Use the use input hook. It's called use input. Use it instead of use controller to create form inputs that have the exact same API as React admin input components. Oh, hey, look, here's an example that we could have, could have copied. All right, a 
extends text, text field props and then, yeah. So let's, let's do that. Um, we don't need to export this either. Interface. Inter interface? Interface. All right. Uh, update import, and we don't need that other import. What's the what's the problem here? Can't. Interesting. Is this not? So <laughs> that's funny. So their example says this is lat long input.js, and then they're using TypeScript. I think for right now, I'm just gonna go back to what I had before. It may not be right, but at least it's not complaining. And then we're using use input and we have all these things. These were the things we saw when we were looking at that type. So that's good. Uh, let's see. And then I think we just want to, let's just take props here like they're doing. And uh, I think I have to take a break because Twitch wants to run an ad. So I'll be back in just a few minutes. I'm gonna stretch my legs and uh, refill my water. I'll be back with some more coding, just a few. BRB.